Hey folks, we're back again on the GMC 302 inline six project. Anyway, so I've already pulled the pulled the crank out of the block, obviously, and uh, the first step of the process, if you remember, there were a couple things on those other videos. Uh, one, I'm concerned about the nose of the crank. But it appears what had happened, that at some point this hub, the keyway that's in the hub, uh, had, had stretched open. So there was quite a bit of play in this, in, in this hub and, and of course in the, in the lower belt pulley. But what it appears that someone had done at some point, they drilled a hole through this hub through the end of the crank and put a pin in it to try to stabilize it and keep it from uh, rocking around. I'm, I'm not real sure why they did that. Uh, the damage on the inside of this is pretty bad. I think I have an idea of how we're going to address that. But I don't want to start that process until I determine that the crank's in pretty good shape. Now the other thing I mentioned in the video that the serial number on the engine had an E designation at the end of it. Now that E designation does in fact mean that the uh, bearing journals are ten thousandths undersized. We don't know if it's been undersized even further. Uh, so I'm going to use a dial caliper. The correct way to do this of course is with a micrometer. I'm going to tell you how we do the first one and then I'll just show you show you the rest of them. Each one does have a different measurement. So here you basically have the what they would refer to as the rear main. Then you have what they call the rear center. Then you have the front center. Then you have the front. Each one again is a different measurement. So on the first one, uh, according to factory specifications anyway, uh, unmodified, we should have a measurement of 2.7765 to 2.7775. So they give you a one thou built-in tolerance there. Let's see where we're at. I'm at 2.765, so that's pretty interesting. So it's looking like we, we probably have this a stock unmodified crank and stock bearings because uh, that is a, that is basically exactly ten thousandths, you know, uh, ten thousandths undersize, which follows along with that E designation. So let's keep going. All right, we ran the numbers, and fortunately, it looks like the. The crank itself, yes, each one of those journals are 10 thou undersized. All right, guys, this is a cylinder setting fixture. You dial this in, and this is accurate to a tenth. So you, you dial this into your desired measurement. And then you have standards that go in that take up the inches. And from there, you dial in your post until your indicator reads zero. Once it does, you lock it down, and that zero on this dial equals the measurement that you put into the setting fixture.
I don't think that could have worked out better. Uh, I'm actually very pleased with how this turned out and we were able to save the crank, which is awesome. So you'll notice when I slid that thing on there, uh, it's it stopped just a little bit. I put a very small amount of taper into the hub because I wanted it to be about a 2,000th interference fit once I slide it up on there. And uh, I haven't cut the keyway yet. Um, I'll do that off camera. It's really nothing too exciting about cutting the keyway. So I'll, I'll cut the key for that. And then this hub and that crank will be saved. Awesome, awesome. The other thing I ended up, um, I did check out the rod bearings as well. And really on the mains and the rods, I'm within about a half, within about a half of a thousandths of the maximum allowable tolerance for journal to bearing clearance. And while that would run and it would probably be perfectly fine, um, actually back in the day, the old race car drivers, what they'd do, they'd build the engines a little loose. I uh, still kind of do that to this day. But uh, they build it a little loose and build in an extra thousandths of main and rod clearance. But, you know, I don't want to do that. I want this engine to live a very, very long time and be very reliable. So I did make the decision to go ahead and go another ten thousandths undersize on the main and the rod bearings. So uh, I'm going to get the, the crankshaft ground and, uh, and polished. So that'll be good to go. For the next episode, I'm going to dive into the cylinder head. Uh, we're going to cut the valve seats out size up some new valves put hardened seats in it you know upgrade everything in that head because we want this thing to be able to twist quite a bit more than only 32 3300 rpm plus we want it to be a hot rod so that's the direction we're heading guys if you enjoy this uh, do me a favor hit like subscribe hit the reminder bell and uh and stay along you know we've got a long way to go on this engine but uh, don't forget also coming up on tuesday morning at 9 p.m or excuse me 9 a.m tuesday morning 9 a.m uh, we're going to have the uh, a representative from Dunlop Motorcycle Tires here who's going to go over some very basics with motorcycle tires, get to the nitty gritty on the tires, features, benefits, things like that. But we're also going to talk about crossing over to the dark side. The dark side, yes, people do run automotive tires on motorcycles. So we want to stick with the facts on that and find out if that's a safe thing to do. So be sure to join us Tuesday morning, 9 a.m., live broadcast on YouTube. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.